Hey guys, what's up? I'm Deepak Srivastav. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I will show you that how you can use child flow to create reusable flow in the Power Automate. Now the question is why we need to create reusable flow. So let me take an example and walk you through and try to make you understand that why creating the reusable flow is very important in Power Automate. So let's take an example of SharePoint. I have a list. I have a specific requirement that I need to create a Power Automate for. Okay. So I create a flow for that list in library. Everything is working good. Then some change request or update request came in. So what I did, I open that flow. I make the changes, republish it, and my flow is ready to go. I have a similar requirement that I need to do for separate or second document library or the list. Generally what we do, right? We create another flow that is very similar to the previous flow that we have created in the first library. Either we can create a copy or just copy the actions from the previous flow and create same flow for this list and library. Now the same question, right? The change came in. So what I will do, I will go ahead and update the two flow this time, right? because I have the two similar flow. Those are running on the two separate library. If I need to make change, I need to make change at the both place. Now, what if I have many list and library that are actually using the same logic flow? If I need to make a very small change as well, what I need to do, I need to go and update each and every flow, republish them. This can be the nightmare for the flow maker. So what we can do, scenario is very same. I have multiple listener library where I have a similar requirement or I need a similar functionality. So what I will do, I will still go ahead and create a flow for each listener library. But this time, this flow is just my trigger flow. Anything that is common between these different flow, I will create a single flow with all of that functionality. And I will call that flow from all these individual flows. And this is what we are going to do today. This is called child flow. So in Power Automate, you can create a flow that you can use as a child flow in other flows. So other flow can actually call that functionality and use it. And if the same scenario, if someone asks for a change or an update in the logic, now you are just updating one place. So you're not updating n number of flow and then publishing them rather you are just updating at one place and all the list and library will get the latest functionality okay so this is what the child flow and this is what we are going to create so without wasting any more minute let's jump onto the flow and create okay before we start uh, you need to learn a few things the number one is the solutions so solution is nothing but uh, you can think like they are the grouping of different flow, app, report, some artifact that you can build and what the solution allow you to do it allow you to create that one single repo. You can package them all together. You can move them from one environment to another environment very easily. I am actually adding some link in this video. So if you want to read and learn more about solutions, you can read through it. And if you like to learn in the video, let me know so I can create a video on how to use solutions. The second thing is the child flow. And what is child flow? A child flow is nothing but a flow. It's very similar flow as the other cloud flow. It just allow you to call the child flow from other flow. Okay. So how to create a child flow? So the number one requirement is you need to start creating a solution and how you can create a solution. If you log into your flow in the left panel, you can see a solutions here. Click there, click on the new solution, give a name. Okay, then you need to select the publisher. Uh, you can select the default publisher or you can create a new publisher if you want. The version, click create. And what this is going to do, this is going to create a solution. Once the solution got created, click on the solution. And this is now your area where you can create the flow. Okay, 
this is the number one requirement for any flow to be become a child flow it has to start inside a solution you cannot have a flow that is outside the solution and use it as a child flow okay now there are multiple options you have right now here that you can use to create a flow you can start creating a new flow or you can actually add an existing flow now what the use case that i'm going to teach you today okay so recently i created a video on sharepoint permissions with power automate okay in in this video what i did i i showed how you can manage sharepoint permissions using power automate i'm going to take the example of this flow and show you how you can actually create this concept as a reusable flow and use it in any sharepoint list and library so start creating the cloud flow the trigger for the cloud flow should be flow button so what i want to create i want to create a flow that i can call from any list and library uh, and what it will do uh, when I'm, I'm going to add an item first it will break the permissions okay and then after that it will assign the permissions okay the first thing that i'm going to use is sharepoint send an http request so the first thing that we need here is the site address now we know we are creating this reusable so we i cannot hard code the site url instead what i can do i can go to the trigger add an input type text and say this is the site url then we need the list name for on which list i need to break permission okay so i created these input that i will require for my uh, this permission reusable flow to work and what i'm asking site url list name recipients this is the email of the people who would be having access once I break and re-grant the permissions and the item ID on which item I'm going to give these permissions. Okay. Now the next thing is the send HTTP request. So the site URL, I'm going to select the custom value and pass the site URL. The method I know is post. And as I said, if you need to know more about this permission HTTP, go back and check out my video. It has all the information about it. The URI. Okay. So I'm passing the site address as in as in variable and also the list name now let me update the header okay so i am passing the list name and then i need to also pass the item id here and we know we are getting item id here perfect right so our api to break the permission on that particular item or the document is this one so we broke the permission and now next what we need to do we need to grant the permission we have luckily the grant permission action already so we don't need to use the api this time but the all the information that we need we need to pass the dynamically so i'm going to select the site address and the recipients what this field required it required the email address uh, semicolon separated okay and that's what i have this recipient variable where i'm going to pass the email address as a, a semicolon click on add dynamic content see more and then search for your recipient role i want to give them edit access okay and click save now one thing you need to also make sure that you return something so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say response select the power apps it's not really nothing to do with the power apps because it's, if you read this thing respond to a power apps or and you can add an output okay and you can return anything you just need to return something uh, in our case or in this scenario what i'm showing it doesn't really need to respond or, or provide anything to the, the flow that is that calling this child flow maybe in some scenario you want to do let's say some query or some operation that will actually get some data as a result you can actually pass this entire data back to the flow like i'm doing here in the sample i'm just passing the entire body of this action okay click save so we are done half part so we have our child flow ready now we need to create the actual flow that is going to do something okay so i'm going back to my solutions you can create one single solution where you can have all your child flow or the reusable flow and your main flows okay or you can create one solution for all of your child flows or the reusable flow and another solution for your other flows but they have to be in the solution you cannot call the child flow from a flow that is not in a solution i'll go back to my uh, 
this section and what I'm going to do right now create another cloud flow and this time what I'm going to do I'm going to say SharePoint and when an item is created okay so I'm going to select the permission demo list and now search for flow and you will get this flow button run a child flow okay select that you will see the list of flow that you have created in either of the solution this is the flow that we created so i'm going to say manage permission you see the the input that we have said it is asking that okay what is the site url what is the list name what is the recipients and the item id recipients i'm hard coding these names but of course these name can be uh, the person who is created or and if you have any other requirement okay you just need to pass the email address semicolon separated and the item ID, we know it's the ID of the item that is just created. Click save. It will give you an error. So what does this mean? That you need to go back to your child flow and update the connection and make sure that it's not using turn only user connection. And I'll show you how you can do it. So go back to your solution. Okay, this is the flow. So I'm gonna go to the details. In the connection area, if you see it saying run only user, click add it. This is the connection that this flow is using. If you are creating this reusable flow for some other type of product like Outlook or anything, you will see it here. And it's saying that uh, connection SharePoint provided by run only user. Change this and use the connection that you want to use this flow to run always. Save. Okay, so we updated the run only users. Now, if I go back to my parent flow, click save. This time it should work without any error. Now I need to go back and create an item here in my list. Click save and let's wait for that flow to trigger. Okay, so flow is running. Let's go and see what happened. So flow completed successfully. Go back to my solution, open my child flow and you see here, right? It also ran and completed successfully. Let's go back to the SharePoint, refresh. And I'm going to see the permissions for this item. So man is access. And if you notice here, the permission for this item has been changed. And if you go to the advanced, you can see that this item has the unique permissions. So our flow is working. Now let's say, what about if you need to use the same concept for other lists? I'm going to edit this flow. And let's say now this time I'm going to target to other list. Okay, so this is my permission list here. We need to update this name for the list. Rest can stay the same because I have not changed anything yet. Now I'm going to create an item into this new list. Item created. Let's see if flow got triggered. Okay, so flow got completed. And if I go to my new list and look at the permission manage access, it's changed, right? So this is what we're talking about. Now, easy part is if I need to make any changes, I can easily go here, update this flow and apply the new changes. And if you are using this child flow for 10 different library, you don't need to change anything there. It's just the one place and you're good to go. So this is what all about the child flow and how you can use it to create some reusable flow in the Power Automate. Give a try. I would highly recommend that. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. Thank you.